everyone, this is Celine from Blue Cala Patterns and welcome to video 5 for the Amaryllis Tote. Um, we're going to be assembling the lining in this video. Uh, we're going to start with something fairly simple and we're going to sew our slip pocket. So you will need both slip pocket pieces and you will need one of your exterior back panel lining pieces. Uh, take your slip pocket pieces, place them right sides together. I'm going to just move this aside. And then pin them together along the top and the bottom edge. Just going to adjust the brightness here. Okay. And then you're going to go over to your machine and you're going to sew along the top and the bottom edge. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. The slip pocket pieces are sewn together along the top and the bottom edge. And then I'm just going to turn this right side facing out. So you should have a fabric tube. And then I just roll the seam allowance between my fingers and press all along the top and the bottom edge. Okay. All right, so once you've pressed the top and the bottom, you're going to go over to your machine and you're going to top stitch the seam allowance along the top edge of the pocket. Okay, so now I'm going to pin my slip pocket piece to the uh, one of my exterior back panel lining pieces and I'm going to pin it about two inches from the bottom. It doesn't have to be exact, you just don't want it to interfere with your pleats uh, later on. Okay, and then I'm going to just pin it in place. And then you're going to start by sewing the pocket to the lining piece along the bottom edge. Use a regular stitch length. So just along the bottom edge here, you're going to sew it. Once you've sewn along the bottom edge, you can take the pins out from the bottom. Then you're going to go over to your machine and you're just going to do a base stitch on both of the sides here. And that's just so the pocket doesn't, um, doesn't move uh, when you're going to fold it and sew it down the center. So just do a quick basting stitch here and here. Now to separate the slip pocket into two separate pockets, just fold this in half, wrong sides together. Make a mark at the bottom and the top edge of your slip pocket piece. Then go over to your machine and sew from the bottom, backstitch. Sew up to the top mark and make sure you backstitch again. Okay, I've now sewn through the center of the pocket piece to create two separate slip pockets. I can set this aside for now. Now you're going to need your zipper pocket lining pieces. Start by putting them wrong side facing up and then I want you to press the bottom edge about 3 eighths of an inch or half an inch wrong sides together. do not know why but my iron is not steaming. Okay, do the same for the second piece. Get that out of the way. Okay, 
and then I'm just going to take my mat out of the way for a minute. And on one pocket only, only one slip, only one zipper pocket lining piece, I want you to trim away one inch from the top, not the folded edge, the straight edge at the top. <clears throat> Okay, you can throw that away. Okay, then flip it so that it's right side facing up. And place your dress zipper along the top edge. And just pin it in place. Okay, and then I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to sew the zipper to the lining piece along the top edge here with a one quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so the zipper is sewn to the zipper pocket piece. Now I'm just going to press it away from the zipper. Then I'm going to take my second zipper pocket lining piece and place it like so. I want it the fabric right side facing up. And then I'm going to repeat the previous step. Place the zipper along the top edge. And then I'm going to sew the zipper to the lining piece with one quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, the zipper is sewn to the second lining piece and I'm going to do exactly the same thing and press the lining away from the zipper. Okay, so this is what it should look like. This here, the zipper is right side facing up and I see the wrong side of my lining pieces. Okay, and if I fl flip it over, that I see the reverse, wrong side, right side. I'm gonna set this aside for now. And you'll need your zipper pocket facing piece and your remaining exterior back panel lining piece. Now on this pocket facing piece, we're going to draw the opening for our zipper. I'm just going to use, I have a, I had a, uh, a nine inch zipper facing template made for me just to make this a little faster. So I'm just going to draw the rectangle. The rectangle should be nine inches wide by three eighths of an inch high if you're using a number three zipper. If you're using a uh, zipper tape that is a 4.5 or a five, then you'll want to make the opening of your zipper half an inch, not three eighths of an inch. Okay, and then I will pin, take this out. I will pin the facing down to my lining piece about two inches from the top edge and have it centered. And you're pinning it right sides together, obviously. Okay, then I'm going to go over to my machine. I'm going to use a shorter stitch length, uh, maybe 2.5, and I'm going to sew along the lines that I just drew all the way around. Keep your needle in the down position to make rotating at the corners easier. So you stop at the corner and then you lift your presser foot and you rotate and then you keep sewing. Okay, so I've just sewn along the rectangle's lines. Take my pins out. And then we are going to cut an opening in the middle of this rectangle. So I'm gonna draw a horizontal line across all through the center. And I stop about half an inch from each end. And then I draw diagonal lines from that center line to each of the four corners of the rectangle. Then I cut this out. So first I start by cutting the line in the center and then I use a pair of very sharp scissors and I cut the diagonal lines, making sure that I don't cut the stitching at the corners, but I try to cut the fabric as close as I can 
to those corners. So now we're going to pull the facing through that opening we just cut towards the wrong side. And here's where you want to take your time and roll the seam allowance. So I kind of dampen my fingers and then I roll the seam allowance and I press and I do this a tiny bit at a time because I want the opening to be a nice perfect rectangle. It just uh, looks nicer if you take your time in this part. Sorry, this part is rather boring. Okay, I see I did not cut my stitching here at this corner very well. I'm just going to take a pair of snips and get a little bit closer here. Here's where I cut my thread, my, my stitching. <laughs> okay. So now I'm just gonna press from the back as well, from the wrong side. Okay, so that was long and boring, but here we are. Okay, so now you're going to take the pocket lining pieces again and you're going to place the zipper in the rectangle opening and what's really important here is you want the the shorter lining piece to be at the bottom so you'll remember we cut away uh, one inch from the top edge of this piece we want that piece to be at the bottom and I just center my zipper in the opening now I actually don't pin a lot and I adjust the um, the rectangle opening around my zipper as I'm sewing in this part here but if you prefer you can use uh, you can use tape or glue just so that your zipper doesn't move while you're sewing I actually just pin on both sides and then I adjust as I'm sewing because that's just how I do it <laughs> okay so I'm gonna go over to my machine I'm gonna sew the zipper in place I'm going to sew all the way around the rectangle opening with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and then when I get to the end I'll backstitch. Okay so the zipper is attached. Now we're going to flip the lining panel over and we'll take the top folded edge of the top zipper pocket lining piece and we're going to fold it down so that both of the folded edges meet at the bottom. That and then just pin or clip them together and then I like to just press the pocket lining piece going upwards so that it stays away from the zipper and it doesn't get caught in the zipper. So now I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to sew along both sides. When I sew along the sides here I sew with my lining panel facing up and then I fold just the lining panel away 
and then I start up the top here, I backstitch, and then I sew down, and you'll see the little triangle of fabric. You want to sew down through the triangle of fabric as close as you can get to this stitching here, and then all the way down to the bottom folded edges, and then make sure you backstitch again. Do the same thing on this side. Okay, so I'm just going to flip this over so you can see that I've sewn both sides. Take off my clips. And then I'm just going to trim the seam allowance a little bit. Uh, when I get to the top here, I try to trim everything except for the zipper end. Okay. Now turn it over and open up your zipper all the way. Do not close it, leave it open because we need it to be open to turn our bag in the last step. Set this aside for now. And we're just going to make sure that we have all of our centers marked. I noticed here that I did not mark my centers and my pleats. So I'm going to find my pen here. There it is. All right, so I'm just going to grab my padding pieces and make sure that I have all of my center marks and my pleat marks. Okay, so center marks on my bottom piece. So this is the bottom lining piece. Now, when we're pleating and assembling the, um, the lining panels, you are going to do this exactly the same way as you did for the exterior in the previous video. So if you're not, hold on, I'm just gonna change my brightness here. If you're not sure, sorry. Hopefully you can see that. Um, if you're not sure or you don't remember, please go back and look at the last video. So that you can be reminded about how I did the pleating at the bottom. Now I will go over a little bit the uh, assembly for all of these pieces and I'm just going to verify. I think I have my pleat marks here. I do. Okay, great. So same as we did for the exterior, we're going to assemble all of these panels, pleat them, and then attach the bottom. It's essentially the same thing with one difference, an important difference, is that when you are assembling every part of the lining shell, I want you to take a larger seam allowance. So don't use 3 8 of an inch like we did for the exterior. I want you to use a half inch seam allowance here. I know you're wondering, well, if I use a half inch seam allowance, won't the, uh, won't the top edges uh, be a different size and then things won't line up? This is not true. And the reason why, and believe me, I've made a few of these bags, so I, I've learned from my mistakes. The lining fabric, even if, if it's interfaced, it does have a little bit more give than the exterior does because the exterior has more interfacing and it doesn't stretch as much. So assemble all of these seams with a half inch seam allowance and then when we're attaching the bottom, use at least a half inch seam allowance, even a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance is better just to prevent a baggy lining for your bag. So I'm not going to go through all of this piecing and pleating again, attaching the bottom. It is exactly the same thing as the previous video. So refer, refer back to that video and assemble all of this and then we're going to do the final assembly of the bag. Actually, there is one thing that I did forget. When we were assembling the side panels to the, the main panels, we were pressing the seam allowance towards the larger main panels and then top stitching along those panels. We're going to do the opposite. You're going to sew together, press the seam allowance towards these side panels and then top stitch 
along the top stitch to seam allowance along the side panels. So that's the one difference as well that you need to, to remember when you're doing this assembly. Okay, so I just want to quickly show you that when I attach the side panel to these two main panels, the, pre the seam allowance was pressed towards the side panel and then I top stitched along the, the side panel. Okay, so I've sewn the lining shell and then I sewn on the bottom after I pleated. Just going to trim the seam allowance along the bottom a bit. I took a bigger seam allowance, so I want to trim some of that away so the lining fits nicely inside my bag. Now, I want to do one other thing before we do the final assembly. I'm just going to flatten my bag and line up those um, the seams where I attached my side panels. Flatten the bag down and then I want to mark the ends here. That will be my center marks at the end, which I'm going to line up with the center marks I made on my exterior panel. Okay, and then I'm going to make sure all of my rectangle rings are pointing down. And then I'm going to insert. Now, wherever you want your slip pocket or zipper pocket, that's personal preference. You can put them at the front, the back of the bag, whatever you prefer. And make sure that your zipper is folded away nicely from the top edge of the bag. So start by pinning those center marks that we just made. And then I line up the side seams. So make sure when you're lining up the side seams that you're lining where the, you're lining up the actual uh, assembly lines, the, the lines of sew, like where you actually sewed the pieces together. Okay, then on the other side, and then I'm just going to clip everything in between. Now you're probably going to have to stretch out the lining a little bit to get it to fit. That's, that's good. That's exactly what we want. Okay. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll finish clipping everything together. Then I'm going to sew all the way around with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then I will turn the bag through the bottom. So I'm going to finish clipping, sew along the top edge with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I've sewn the exterior to the lining along the top edge and I'm just going to turn my bag through my uh, the bottom of my zipper pocket. Now, if you're worried about bulk, you should probably trim a bit of the uh, the seam here at the the side seams where the side seams meet. Uh, my machine is going to not have any problems with that, but if you think yours might, you might want to trim away a bit, but try not to trim too much because you don't want to. Um, clip your zipper. So you shouldn't be cutting your zipper, only the fabric. Okay, so I'm going to tuck this all the way in. I'm going to have a look. I have a lot of threads to trim away. Okay, so I'm going to try to tuck this in. If you if you prefer, you can actually uh, press the seam allowance away from the zipper all the way around. I tend to just uh, pull it away and and make sure that it looks nice as I'm doing my top stitching. So many threads. Good grief. Okay. Okay, and then I'm just going to close my zipper. Ooh. 
Okay, that looks good. All right, so I'm just gonna go over to my machine and do the top stitching, which will prevent this from happening. Whoosh, there we go. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go do my top stitching. Okay, so I've just completed the top stitching and now I want to close the bottom of my zipper pocket. So just pull the bottom out and so you want to clip those folded edges together and then you can either uh, hand sew these um, together to, cl to close the bottom of your pocket or uh, you can use your machine. I'm a terrible hand sewer so I always go over to my machine and I just try to sew as close as I can to the, um, the bottom folded edges. Okay. Okay, so the bottom of the pocket is sewn up. I'm just going to tuck it inside and close that up. And then I'm going to shorten my zipper and install my my zipper end so hopefully you'll be able to see this I should have gathered my supplies before I did this so you're going to need some glue and your zipper end and a screwdriver and a pair of scissors and first thing I'm going to do I don't like a really long zipper tail I actually like mine to be quite short so I'm going to cut about this much and you don't want the zipper end to fray. I actually melt mine. Okay, then try not to lose the little screw that comes with this. It's stuck at the bottom of the bag. It is, the bag is sealed, that's why. Okay, all right, there we go. So I just take, I'm looking at the zipper from the wrong side and I just fold it in like this. Okay, and then I just check to make sure it'll fit. Okay, that should work. I add a drop of glue inside the zipper end. If I can open my glue. I'm just using um, E6000 for this and I just put a, a one drop inside. Okay, that is a bit more than a drop. Okay. Try not to get any glue on my bag. And then I'll stick this in. And then I find if I can't get all the zipper tape in, I just grab my seam ripper. And I kind of use my seam ripper to tuck this inside. and it kind of works pretty well to use the seam ripper. Just make sure you don't stab yourself. Okay. And then if you have Loctite, you can put a drop of Loctite in before you, um, you place your screw. I don't have Loctite, so I'm going to use some E6000, but for the sake of the video, I'm just going to, um, and I don't have the right tip of course just to speed things up for the video I'm just going to install the screw and I'll add my glue later um, I also keep a bit of uh, rubbing alcohol and some q-tips handy because sometimes you can get some of the glue on your hardware and I find the uh, the rubbing alcohol it makes it come off really easily so 
Anyways, there's my zipper end. Okay. Now we can add our handles. Where are my handles. So to add the handles, I know I, I mentioned it previously, you should have a, a, a little dot where you want to set your rivet. So I just slip the end of the handle through one of the rectangle rings and then I'm going to clip it or not. Okay, my clip doesn't want to stay on, I think. Okay, so what I'll do then is I'll get my rivets ready and I'll just punch the hole and I'll add the rivet. I know this is kind of a nerve-wracking part because um, you don't want to make a mistake here and ruin your handle because then that's a lot of work to redo. Believe me, I understand. I'm not going to set the rivets on the video because that's very obnoxiously loud. So I'm just going to put them here for now, like this. And then go the other way. Try not to rush this and make a mistake, I will regret. Okay, and so that's what that looks like. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side and then I'll set my rivets. Uh, but first I'm going to get the uh, my materials to make my uh, crossbody adjustable strap and we're going to sew up the strap and then our bag will be done. Okay, the last thing we need to do is make our, our adjustable strap. Um, so get your strap piece, your one inch swivels and your one inch rectangle slide and start by folding in the ends of your strap. Um, I do about half an inch towards the wrong side and you do that at both shorter ends. And then you have to fold your strap in half the entire length and press. Now I'm not going to show you the pressing of the entire strap because that's incredibly boring. Then you once, you, once you've pressed it in half the entire length, open it up and fold in both halves towards that center crease that you just made. Both sides. So that the raw edges meet together at the middle. And then once you've done that the entire length, then you fold it, once again, you fold it at that center crease and press it again. And then you should have a long strap piece that's one inch wide. And then you'll go over to your machine and you'll sew all along the outer edges with, with a one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so um, I've sewn my strap piece. I'm going to take my rectangle slide and I'm going to pass one end of the strap through the rectangle and wrap it around the middle bar. Fold it onto itself probably around um, one and three quarter inches. And then I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to sew this in place with a square box of stitching. Okay, so the rectangle slide is attached to my strap. I'm going to take the opposite end of my strap, making sure that my strap is not twisted, and I'll pass it through the ring of one swivel. 
and then again make sure the strap isn't twisted pass that same end through the slide okay and then again that end pass that end through the ring of the other swivel and then I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to sew this in place exactly like I did for my rectangle slide and then my strap will be done. You just clip the swivels onto the D-ring connectors at either side of your bag. Okay, I just wanted to show you quickly uh, my crossbody strap attached on both sides. And then before you start using your bag, what I always like to do is uh, I really like to stuff it. And when you stuff the bag and you just let it rest for a while, um, I find it makes your lining fit really nicely inside your bag. Thanks for joining me. This is the end of the Amaryllis video.